very, very briefly, I'm Michael Brown. I run a business called 1080. Uh, we focus really on two things. One, career management and getting managers to engage in career conversations to drive engagement. And secondly, we've been using some fairly clever technology, which I want to share with you today, on how you embed the learning. Um, when I do these sort of things, I try to be quite controversial, thought-provoking. How many people are actually in L&D here? Most people? Yeah. Um, and I can speak as a, C, a former CEO of a nameless company. We very rarely demonstrate the value of the learning. So we fail to embed it. The reason why you have hard times convincing CEOs and FDs why we should spend money on L&D is because we can't prove our case. In fact, you're sitting there knowing that you're going to retain about 10% of what I'm going to tell you. And more importantly, you're not going to implement it when you're going to work. And we know as an industry, we spend approximately about a £1,000 per person on leadership and development programs. We're using an old formula that we know doesn't work. So what are we going to do about it? So what I'm going to try and do in 30 minutes is at least say there are things we can do about it. And, and, and the first thing we need to recognise is, and it's a great book, which by, when, when I do these talk, talks, I try to give you stuff that I think is really important. Good, I'll do some good YouTube clips. I'll, I'll tell you, it's a really good book. This says what the world of work is going to look like. And we're still using 1940s, 1950s models, and that's where we moved on. Yeah? I love Dan Pink. Have you read his book? Puzzle Motivation. He's got a great cash line. He says, what science knows, business ignores. He's actually talking about money and motivation, but I'm using exactly the same thing. And what's really interesting... The solution to embedding learning, we know, we've known since the beginning of time. I want to tell you a story. Are you all aware that Homo sapiens weren't the first, nor the strongest or the fittest beings on this planet? Yeah? Do you know, do you know the first, the, the, the ones that seem to have the way they'll survive, Neanderthals. So when I say somebody's a Neanderthal, we, we can have vision, don't we? You're right, they were stronger, they were faster. They were more attuned to what we had to do to survive on this planet. The good news for us Homo sapiens, there was something that we had that they didn't do. Do you know what that was? Share learning. Collaborate. All the anthropological, logical research shows from cave drawings that Homo sapiens survive because we learned off each other. So how come we don't use that as L&D professionals today? Yeah, I, I know we do things in learning sets a little bit, but by and large, in a classroom, we're telling and we're selling. We're not sharing learning, and that's why you're not inventing that's why you're not embedding it. Let me show you a video. Ex explaining our collaborative learning technology. Homo sapiens became the surviving human species because of our ability to collaborate and learn socially. It is part of our DNA and one of the main reasons why we are here today. But even now, we still don't collaborate enough and miss opportunities to learn, adapt and create a competitive advantage. This is because within our lives at work and home, we tend to learn in bubbles. When we read a book, article, or do some e-learning, we learn in isolation. When emails are sent that ask a question to help our learning, they are usually one-to-one -one or one-to-a-few. Training events and workshops are just a larger bubble, and conferences are a huge bubble. After any interaction, the participants are usually the only ones who have the knowledge and know what happened. 
Sure, we can create a training document and put it on our hard drive where, of course, no one can review it. Or we can put it on the public drive where, of course, no one can find it. The problem is that the knowledge and learning we have can be valuable to others, but they don't know about it because they weren't included. Or maybe they didn't even know it happened. When we learn using closed-off methods, we run the risk of limiting our learning because we lack the input from others, which can lead us to make poor decisions in a bubble. Duplicating, duplicating, duplicating the work of others and not communicating the important information to the stakeholders and learning from each other. But that's the way it's always been and we really can't do anything about it. Can we? Actually, we can. Using collaborative technologies like 1080's Jive Cloud, we can now share our learning out loud and tap into the collective intelligence, creativity and innovation in others. No longer is learning kept in a bubble, but now it's open, ready for others to discover, share, follow, debate and use. Our technology opens up learning by allowing you to communicate, share knowledge and learn where others can see it and comment on it. Want to ask others what they think of an article? Instead of asking only a few people, ask everyone in the company and get input from those whom you didn't even know existed. Cut across both hierarchical and organisational barriers and see the impact you make when you share and learn using a status update, discussion or blog. So, instead of learning in a bubble, open up, share and be informed. Invest in our collaborative approach to maximise learning in your organisation. To find out more, head over to our website or get in contact with us. If you think that was an issue, i.e. we don't embed learning, I've got other things to say that I think why we fail to get senior management to engage with us. Okay? So, first of all, if we don't know the value of what we put in and we can't demonstrate to the business, that's not very helpful. Secondly, we want to take people off the place of work. How do we typically deliver what we do? Well, we put people in the classrooms. Well, that's great, except the most expensive assets of businesses, they're not doing their job. Now, we have moved down the 70-20-10 route, but by and large, I would still say, we're doing learning when it suits us, the L&D people. Do you know how the next generation learn? They learn on these things, don't they? I do Michael's learning when I go on trains. I can go on 10 or 15 minutes and I can see and I can read material. We have got to operate on the same plane. It's no good thinking that 25, 35 year olds are going to go back into the classroom and learn like we did in the 60s and 70s. We're fooling ourselves. It's got to look like Facebook, LinkedIn. Next one. Now, I think there's some really good management speakers, some fantastic people. Um, if you've not come across people like Dan Pink, Magnus Lindquist, um, Sean Acro, they're fantastic. But most of you here, me included, can't afford them. They're going to charge you 12, 15,000 pounds a day. Do you know what? They're free. They're on TED Talks, they're on YouTube. I'm making the case that you now can access the world's biggest managing gurus and it doesn't cost you a penny. So long as you have the technology. And do you know another reason why it doesn't work? Because we do a sheep dip approach. We assume that one size fits all. You put people in a room and actually you're targeting typically the lowest common denominator. If I go on management training, I don't want people to tell me things I already know. Now, if you was working in the car manufacturing business, you'd know a thing called mass customization. If you bought a car recently, do you know what they do? You go in, and yes, you buy a chassis, but then they say, what do you want it to look like? Everything from alloy wheels through to sunroof, and they build it to order. We've got to do the same in L&D. We've got to customise it. So for the individual, it reflects their needs, not, again, what we think will suit the most people. So what I've tried to say here is it doesn't work because people 
don't embed the learning. I'm saying it's expensive because it takes people out of the workplace. It's, ex it's expensive to get the very best people. It's one size fits all, and it's a time that suits us. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, yeah, he's got a point, then let me show you something slightly different. Um, actually, I'm not a technology person. I like technology, I'm curious, but I'm not a technology person. What I came across when I was doing some research for Pearson is a piece of technology called Jive Software. Jive.com. It's used by some really big companies. People like Pearson's, Apple, uh, Thomson Reuters. And again, you're probably thinking there, Phew, that's great, Michael, they've got huge IT budgets. This technology is available and it's very cheap. My business of one and a half million with about, what, 10 full-time staff and about 60 associates, I can do it at 35 pounds a time. So I practice what I preach, I use this technology. Okay? What is it? It's collaborative software. It's the ability to share knowledge 24-7, so long as you've got access to the internet anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. And, and, and so all I'm doing is taking as an L&D expert, if you like, the technology the, and using it to its full. So I do it in three ways. Firstly, if I'm, and, and by the way, I did tell you a little bit of a lie, because I still use classrooms, because I know A audiences want classrooms on occasionally, and sometimes we, we need to get people in the same room. But I don't use it as often as I used to. But when I do, or I'm running a program, I use this to tell people what's going to happen. I'll create a video, the course tutor will talk to all participants. Currently running something for the British Council in Southeast Asia. We can talk to everybody who's going to come into Dubai in two weeks' time. Through the wonders of FaceTime, Skype. So we'll put the brief in. Any diagnostics, we put on this, this tool. So if we're going to use psychometrics, we use strength scope, we go through this tool. We can poll people. I can get real-time feedback in terms of what they're thinking. I'm going to show you my major client. The CEO uses it all the time. He'll ask, he'll ask his leaders questions. Real-time feedback on engagement questions. When we, then we run the development and we use it. And then, subsequent to that, we will use it for follow-ups to embed the learning. So we'll use Q&A with the tutors. Um, we'll run our learning sets on them. Um, it facilitates learning between participants. The key is to get le learners to share their knowledge. So, um, it's very like Facebook and LinkedIn. So you have a profile, and the significance of the profile, as you know from your Facebook and your LinkedIn, is what it tells you about you. But from an organizational perspective, as you can see, I can say what I like, what I'm good at. I can share that knowledge. You can connect people. The key to participation on this new media is gamification. How many play Candy Crush? How many people go on TripAdvisor? TripAdvisor, by the way, is fantastic, isn't it? The wisdom of the crowd. I can pick any hotel, any restaurant, anywhere in the world, and it will tell me what 10 people thought of it last week. Gamification. You create ways and means to engage people by running competitions. So at Christmas, when we used it, we had a Santa through to elves system. Highest point score was Santa, lowest was elves. Um, Worked in an energy company, different types of energy. You find ways and means to engage people. We've been using this now for three years in a credit card company based in Chester called MBNA. Um, at the time we were commissioned to do the work, um, they had a major issue. The parent company, Bank of America, had put them up to sale. So surprise, surprise, um, when people say you're up for sale, what do they think? Yeah, we're going to be bought by Barclay Card and we'll all be made redundant. So motivation was not good. And more, the management was really concerned because who was likely to leave the drowning 
the sinking ship first, their best managers. So they had to find a ways and means to engage those people for at least a couple of years. Not my idea, their idea. They came up with the idea of explorers. We don't know the destination, but we know the journey will be exciting and will give you employability. Indeed, they came up with names like uh, the three programs. Senior managers was Columbus. Middle managers was Edmund Hillary climbing the mountain. And the first line managers was Livingstone. I did point out to them, you do know that Livingstone got lost, don't you? And so what they then tried to do is create a, a, a management leadership development program for those three populations. And they had those four objectives. As a result of this program, you will be more valuable as an asset. If you have to leave or we have to close the business, you we can get a job. Um, we want to increase employee engagement. We, they knew as a business they had to be more agile. If you think about credit cards, mobile payments are coming down the road very quickly. You're going to use this to pay your credit card. They didn't have that technology. So they wanted to increase learning agility. And I persuaded them. Uh, do we know what HR's worst invention is, by the way? HR's worst invention? 360 degree feedback. Why? Because it focuses on, on the negative. Play to your strengths. So we brought positive psychology into the organization and we use a tool called Strength Scope. Um, so what do we do? Checking the time. What do we do? We increase self-awareness through diagnostics. We did run master classes. A really good guy called Damien Hughes, specializing in change management. Check him out on YouTube. Really good speaker. Uh, Magnus Lindquist. Best stand-up comedian futurologist I've seen. Really funny. Doesn't know he is, but really funny. Um, coaching and mentoring, things you'll appreciate. Uh, to create learning agility, we put teams into local charities and told them, tell them how you might run this better business. So they did all sorts of things with um, uh, adoption charities, uh, community groups to increase their learning agility. We, we created career conversations, all managers talk to the staff around what's important to them, what they like doing, what motivates them. Um, we, we created Dragon's Den brand challenges, MBN has all what it calls affinity cards. Things like um, National Trust and Manchester United, and we engage the leaders how they might maximise the potential of those cards. And then we use reflective learning and learning sets. So that's the, the input side. The cloud was used to communicate to all 250 leaders. The CEO, the CFO and the HRD uses a blog to engage those leaders. So when they got the engagement score, so for example, how come our first line population don't have faith in the management, he would ask them, what, tell, me, tell me what I'm not doing here. Or they would celebrate successes, like we've become credit card uh, of the year. They would use this technology to generate debates. The results, over a three year period, engagement went up from 53% to 82%. Things like staff attrition, absenteeism fell. Customer services scores went up. They won credit card of the year. I, I can't tell you the financials, but a bit of a clue. Went the right way. Won two awards from personnel today. And turned the business around. Credit, the parent company said, we'll think we'll hang on to, the, hang on to this asset. I'm going to claim not all, but a lot of that was driven by that leadership development program. So I make mean, oh, ROI. Uh, it wasn't all plain sailing. It took us a long time to get the older generation to engage with the tool. And by the way, the older generation tend to be senior management. Um, what we discovered is that you use it like Facebook as a fun tool, you will engage people. So one of the key things we kicked off with was what's your favorite crisps? I kid you not. It got 250 hits in a Friday afternoon. It was important we engaged what I call the early adopters. 
What was fantastic about it is the chief executive and his team got line of sight with the first line managers to engage with it, who they would never have known out of 2,500 2, staff had they didn't have the access to the cloud. And he started one-to-one -one and group conversations with his first line management. Tell me what I need to do. Or I'm thinking of doing this, do you have a view? We've rolled it out in two other organizations just to show you it works on a grandiose scale. Horizon Geoscience are a business based in the Gulf who survey the bottom of the ocean. So a lot of people on boats a lot of the time. British Council, you probably come across education. We deliver it in, in Southeast Asia. Hi, I'm Joan O'Connor and I will be facilitating your leadership event uh, late February. I'm also going to be feeding back your strengths scope reports in the one-to-one -one conversations that start happening next week in late January. I thought it might be helpful to outline some of what we'll cover on the event. We plan to explore how you, your teams and the business interact and how we might increase the effectiveness of that interaction. In particular, we will look at reviewing the business objectives and what it takes to be collectively successful. We'll look at your individual and collective strengths through the strengths group results and look at what does that mean for how you can make best use of these in the work that you do. We'll also look at personal and team leadership styles and how you might use these styles to effectively manage the transition over the next six months within the region. And finally, we'll look at collaborative leadership and how you can maximise your effectiveness as a team member, regardless of the team that you belong to. You can use the Leadership Cloud to ask me any questions that you may have in advance of the leadership event taking place. I'm very much looking forward to working with you and meeting you all soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. I know that's not easy to listen to in a wider audience, but if it's on your mobile or your iPad, you can hear it. Um, I'm particularly proud of that. A, because that's my wife. B, we recorded at 8 o'clock on a Monday morning on one of those things. Cost, nil. The ability to engage audience, and that was to British Council, to people sitting out in India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, who are coming on a program. See, I think people think they think, you know, this is really clever technology, it's really difficult, it costs a lot of money. It's not. It's there. The MBA program, all that stuff I talked about, £500 per person. Jive, say you work in a population of about 1,000 people, £100 per person. I think it is technology, if we think what we spend on at learning development, that we can afford. And I repeat, I'm not a technology salesperson, I'm just using that to deliver what we do. Now, if what I said resonated with you, i.e. we do it, but we don't embed it, and that's why we don't have enough credibility, and you are thinking, well, actually, Michael, there might be a different way, and you've captured my attention. We use this tool in, in the business, and we use it for our personal development. Indeed, we're about to make a change. We've been using LinkedIn with a group called 1080 Elite, and I'm going to move it on to the cloud. So, so if you want, for your personal development, to spend time on our cloud and think about what's important to you and use some of our tools and see, access some of our materials, if you go to our stand and sign up, we'll put you onto it at no cost. Now, I can almost say that because I know not all of you will go, but it's there for you. If you think your career is important and you want, you want to have a learning system that gets embedded, go and play with it. And we can share learning. And by the way, I want you to do it, so I want to learn off you, because that's what collaboration learning is all about. So, I'm sorry I fibbed about the classroom being dead. It's not dead. It might not even be dying, but there are alternative ways. In 2015, let's, if we are going to have credibility in the business, let's make sure what we do makes a difference. Embed the learning. Go back to my story about Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. Let's recognize we learn most off each other. 
Let's use technology to do that. And let's deliver it to individual client needs at a time they want to learn. Enjoy the conference. <laughs>